What tools does an SLP use? Asking for a bigger budget and better equipment. It might seem like some days working as a medical SLP, you're lucky if they remember to order you some toothbrushes for your patients. But I promise that there are facilities out there that do have large capital budgets and truly do respect the value that we bring to the facility. Stick around to hear what three tools I would request with a big budget. It might seem really far-fetched to envision that a facility would actually let you, the SLP, get some equipment that costs as much money as one of the 2,000 treadmills that PTs get, but I assure you that it does happen. Beyond that, several facilities receive grant funding or have charities or donors that want funds to go towards a specific department, and it's always a wonderful day when those funds are directed towards SLPs. So let's dive in. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, fees, fees, fees. I'm always going to insist that you have access to fees because of what it can show us as both a diagnostic tool and also as a tool for biofeedback. Fees is wonderful because it is completely ours. We don't need nursing or radiology or other physicians to help us with this procedure. We are an autonomous profession that is able to diagnose patients and this tool truly allows us to do that. Fees has grown in popularity in recent years due to technological advances leading to smaller and more compact equipment while simultaneously improving the camera image. The cost has also significantly decreased, which has led to increased market share of these systems. This has allowed facilities that had otherwise not been able to provide instrumental assessments for swallowing or to transport their patients to the hospital for video fluoroscopy to now offer this crucial service to their patients. Fees can conveniently be used in the ICU, transported down to the emergency department, across the street to an outpatient clinic, used in a skilled nursing facility, and even in a patient's home in many states. This allows fees to be performed at any time that a patient may require it without having to wait for other professionals to clear their schedules. Due to convenience, cost savings, and clinical findings, fees should be more widely used and can be argued that it should be used first. This would allow for more patients to be evaluated in a shorter amount of time, leading to decreased length of stay and lower costs of the facility overall. Once the fees is completed, the SLP has the option to perform video fluoroscopy or other GI exam or referral if needed. Depending on how big your budget is, we'll depict which system you might wanna go with. There are wonderful mobile fees systems on the market that come with a smaller suitcase and the endoscope hooks into a laptop. These can run anywhere from 15 to $25,000, depending on the different bells and whistles. Also, depending on your facility, you might be able to clean the scope yourself using high-level disinfectant, or you may be required to send the scope down to central processing, which is less than ideal, but still works. There are also these beautiful towers that can be north of $100,000, and they are 100% worth it if you have the funds for that. They aren't as portable or mobile, but they still can be moved around. They usually also have the capability to do video stroboscopy as well. I know working in some of these larger facilities, it can be really hard to coordinate everyone's schedules or navigate the challenges of so many professionals and providers all trying to get in to see that one single patient. But once I had access to fees at my disposal anytime I needed, it felt like my career became exponentially easier. If I had a new admission that we just knew needed an instrumental, let's go use the fees. If we had a patient that's been making wonderful progress with their treatment plan and they want to get discharged, let's do fees and take a look how he's doing. I often had patients that really struggled to understand the concept of their swallowing disorder or didn't quite understand why we were recommending all these precautions. And using fees as a biofeedback tool, a picture really is worth a thousand words. And well, a video of the swallow is probably worth a million. Fees is always the number one tool that I will advocate for all SLPs to have access to because of its capabilities that it has for our practice. Number two, an iPad with an extra budget for several assessments and therapy apps. iPads are often discussed as tools for pediatric therapists and for use in gauging children, but the iPad can also be a tool for the medical SLP and adults. Testing and stimulus materials for adults are making their way onto iPads. It can be a fantastic tool for on-the-fly documentation during therapy sessions. 
While we don't want to do all of our session notes during the patient's treatment, it's a fantastic way to jot down soap notes or data collection. The iPad can also be used as a biofeedback tool to show the patient a picture or video of what a vocal nodule might look like, where a particular cranial nerve runs, or even the images from their own swallow study. Many publishers are now creating their language and cognitive communication assessments as apps where the data can easily be inputted and scored automatically for you. Also, there has been a big boom in apps for therapy and treatment that can be used on iPads that also include data collection and gamification to keep the patient highly engaged and rewarded for their progress. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't want to miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also leave a comment below to tell me about the tools that you're currently using or any that you're interested in trying. Lastly, an SEMG biofeedback device. Surface electromyographic biofeedback. SEMG is a non-invasive technique for investigating the activity of the muscles used for swallowing. 2019 randomized control trial demonstrated that dysphagia therapy using SEMG biofeedback enhances hyoid displacement but functional improvements in swallowing need to be further studied. However, a 2021 study by Archer et al. showed significantly increased muscle activity with SEMG biofeedback, and over 98% of the participants stated that they would be happy to use it regularly. These devices used to be much more expensive, but they've come down considerably in cost and even have more mobile options and even at-home systems with apps available now. In my experience, patients love using the SEMG biofeedback because the companies have used gamification to make them really fun. It's almost like a video game that you play while doing your swallowing exercises. I had a little old lady that was pretty miserable being in skilled nursing setting. She hated doing the exercises. She was not a fan of any of the therapy in general, but we realized that she loved coming to the therapy gym to play her video games, which was actually her swallowing exercises. So I am all for any equipment that increases motivation to adhere for our patients to adhere to their treatment plan. We have some amazing done for you in services inside of the MetaSLP Collective Clipboard Kit. To access that, head over to metaslpcollective.com forward slash clipboard, where we have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out.